Hey everybody, it's Rick Jansen over at eXp Realty and Denver Lifestyle Real Estate, I'm the host of Top Cloud Agents. And I have Aaron Kin here, uh, a top icon agent with eXp Realty. And before we get started on this exciting interview, I'm really, really looking forward to just hearing what Aaron has to say. Need to read a little disclaimer for you. Put on my reading glasses here. The materials and content discussed within this show are the opinions of Rick Jansen and or the guests interviewed. This information is intended as general information for listeners of the podcast and the show. Listeners should conduct their own due diligence and research before making any business or financial decisions. This podcast is produced completely independently of eXp Realty and is not endorsed, funded, and or otherwise supported by eXp directly or indirectly. That is one of the beauties of working for eXpi, which is traded on the NASDAQ, is that we, eXp does hold itself to a very, very high standard and wants to make sure that people are being compliant. What we do on this show is share the best practices and tips and tricks of icon agents and agents around the country who are operating in the cloud. This is a brand new business model around since 2009, but I say brand new because people are just discovering it. Aaron, we're just discovering you too. So get, get into a little bit, you know, for people who haven't met you, including myself, um, who are you? What's your background? Uh, how, did you, how did you wind up at eXp? Yeah, so I'll start at the very beginning. I guess when I uh, got out of college, I was a um, perfect training for real estate, by the way. I was a high school art teacher and baseball and basketball coach. So um, got burned out on that after about three or four years of doing that. Uh, got my real estate license, worked part-time, um, became pretty successful pretty fast because I did know the internet and I did know technology and how to utilize it. Our MLS system was DOS when I first started. And I had a programming buddy that figured out a way that I could actually email listings to potential buyers. And I was the only one at that time that I knew of that was able to do that out of my MLS system. So you were the only one with an email address, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was able to ramp up pretty fast. And my second year in real estate sold over 50 homes. And then every year since then, I've sold over 100 homes. I've been in real estate now uh, 18 years, have a small team. Um, I was nine years at other brokerages or eight years, sorry, uh, nine years on my own. I was my own broker owner, and then I joined eXp actually a year ago in April 1st is basically my uh, turn date, so. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, this kind of dispels one of the myths I hear out there about eXp, and maybe this was from early people not knowing how to share uh, the experience, but they say, oh, I, you know, I, I don't want to do eXp because I want to keep producing. Right. Yeah, we, I keep producing. So, <laughs> um, how, many, how many homes will you sell this year? Personally, I'll, I'll sell about 40 to 50 myself um, on the listing and buy side. I still work with some buyers, typically referrals, things like that. But um, my team will do between 100 and 150. That's, so, that's outstanding. That's outstanding. So, yeah, here you have a successful team. Uh, you know, you're doing 100 homes a year. Why bother with eXp? Why wouldn't you just keep doing what you're doing? You know, I was doing more than that. I was doing 150 to 250 a year. Um, my best year ever was like 307. Um, but that takes a lot of overhead, uh, a lot of commitment to marketing dollars, office space, all of that. Um, so when I saw the eXp model, I was, I was not as concerned about being the number one agent anymore or the big, you know, um, million dollar producer or whatever, GCI. I was more concerned with my net and I saw with what eXp offered, um, I could actually do less and net more. Um, so I wanted to kind of move my business that route, kind of contract my team down. I was at like eight agents, um, four full-time staff, and now I'm down to basically two staff, three agents and myself and my wife actually just got her license as well. So oh, she's that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so I am actually looking the other way, look at my pocketbook instead of, you know, oh, the big accolades for being such top producers. Yeah. And that's, and that's interesting, right? Cause I, I, I listen to Tim and Julie Harris coaching a lot and they say, you know, you're in business to make a profit. Yes. Bottom line. Like, yes, we're, we're in business to serve the client, find the best home, sell the home for the most dollars, whatever. But as a realtor, your business is to make profit or you go out of business. So yeah, I was like the, in a nonprofit business, you know, so, um, or a low profit. I wasn't nonprofit, yeah. but I mean, um, we were spending so much and, you know, I had so many agents, I felt like I needed to feed them, yeah. um, which, 
another reason to go into exp is they help feed them you know they give them knowledge through the cloud you know 20 plus hours of training a week they um, give them all the database of all that knowledge that they can go and tap to uh, into at any time so uh, that was one big reason then the other big reason obviously was for uh, building a retirement um, I you know most realtors don't do a very good job of building that retirement um, and I found you know, for me, the only way to have residual in real estate was to own it. Um, and it was harder and harder the last six or seven years when our market's been skyrocketing. So um, for me, seeing the back end of things where I could invest a little piece of each commission into the EXPI stock uh, at a discount um, made perfect sense. And it kind of builds my retirement for me while I'm just doing what I do. Yeah, absolutely. And remind me what market you're in right now. I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth Metroplex. I'm in a little town called Keller, Texas, which is actually on the Fort Worth side. Okay, awesome. So you're down there in Keller, Texas, and you 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 find this opportunity um, with EXP. How do you break that to your team? Because I talk, well, I'm talking to agents locally here. They're part of the agent attraction, and they're like, "Well, I've got a 10 million, 20 million, 60 million dollar business. I don't know how I would move that. How does somebody take a business as large as yours and move to EXP?" Yeah, and we weren't quite as big as six. We were about 45, but we were able to, you know, we positioned it from, hey, here's the benefits that you'll have by moving to EXP. Um, one, you have the attraction level where you can actually attract agents and get rewarded for it. You okay. have um, the ability to start saving for your retirement through, uh, you know, revenue share, but also through um, the stock um, and then they give you so much stock for doing so many different things. And the way I, I transitioned it is, you know, some of them did want to stay with the team and still work that and some wanted to go independent. So we moved them in independently. Actually, I moved all my agents independent. Okay. Um, and the ones that wanted to come in and still work team leads, they still were allowed to work team leads, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't think it's undoable or not doable. I think it's, I think it's wrong to not look at it the way it should be looked at, which is this is an amazing opportunity that you can help fulfill parts of your agent's lives to help them grow and better themselves in their, their career and their retirement accounts and things like that. So that's the way we positioned it. Um, so I, everyone came over with me except one agent uh, decided to go out on their own and he was more like an investor yeah. Um, so he, he just liked to flip homes and things like that. So he didn't see it. And sure. Well, it's, it's interesting. Cause like in, in talking to your team members about it, you just use basically the same principles as the agent attraction that we would t talk about in a one-on-one -on -one coffee or a lunch and learn, or if someone just approaches to the closing table and said, Hey, what's EXP about? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you just teach what we already know, but also, you know, where they can leverage that for themselves. It's no longer just a broker's game. Yeah. I felt like when I was my broker owner, here's the big broker, I'm the one making everything and you get the scraps. This way they're on equal, equal playing field and they can do the same thing I can do or do it better and actually help produce me on that end. So. And that, that selfless attitude that you have, Aaron, I, I, I'm finding that more and more through these interviews is that it's the team leader is saying, hey, look, I've, I've already made it right? I'm, I'm have a comfortable life. I don't have to change anything, but what about my team? And you have voiced this. Others have voiced this, that it, the move to EXP was just as much motivated by getting your team members into a better place financially, securing their retirement, securing their passive income as it was for you. And that's yes. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, from a practical level, right, you've got your splits, you've got everything else going on. You have, you know, marketing to transition over. You have everybody that like new logins and passwords and applications. Like what does that mess look like and how long did that take you? You know, um, because I was my own broker, I had to do it a little differently too, as I actually did my letter of intent and then everybody else moved over underneath my, and I was the last to go. Mm. Um, so we were actually able to, through that process, it took about two months because I have one or two stragglers that, drug their feet, took their time to fill out their stuff. So I was able to work through everybody else's stuff while they were getting it. We were kind of learning it together. By the time I came, I already knew what I had to do. Um, and we already had the signage and the marketing and all that stuff already produced. Um, we used the same exact signage realistically. We just, you know, 
put the logo on with a, a super strong vinyl kind of sticker, you know, um, there was space on our sign to do it. So we just had the, you know, brokered by EXP added to what we already had. So, yeah. And that's, and that's great. Cause you have your own independent brand. And yeah. You're able to keep that independent brand, which I, I was my own independent brand for 16 years. Um, and I just added EXP to the sleeve. I haven't done to this shirt yet. It's on my list of things to do. Um, but I keep, I keep my own brand, but I add EXP here and away I go, right? It cost me $8 to, to sew that on. And I'm still in business as Denver Lifestyle at EXP. And you're still in business the way people have always known you. So you don't lose any momentum. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's not a change of identity at all. Yeah. So letter of intent uh, for, you know, for team leaders out there who might be listening to this around the country in New York, Alaska, wherever they might be, Kansas, like what, what is a letter of intent? That's, that's the first time many people have probably heard that phrase. Yeah. So basically you can go on and, or at least it was this way a year ago. I hope it's still the same because it was a pretty seamless way to do it is I basically filled out all my paperwork saying I was coming over and I had 120 days to pull the trigger basically. Okay. What that letter of intent did was give me my um, access rights to EXP, um, give me a, a code in their system to where when my people came over and said I was the referring agent, I still got credit for that. As long as I came in within that 120 day period of time. Okay, so you can kind of pre-build your team or your revenue tree already, uh, yeah. and then you just slide in right on top. I, I think it's more, important for or necessary for broker owners than it is a normal sure. team uh, that don't own the brokerage. The reason I had to do it that way is because I own the brokerage, the MLS information, all of that. So if I had left before my agents left, they would be automatically forced into inactive license status. So they'd have to go through a whole nother step to then get reactivated with EXP. So it's just easier to do it that way. It is. And I didn't know about that. So what I did is I, there was someone in my firm that um, had gone through all the managing broker training. I bumped her up, bumped me down. Gotcha. I left. Everybody else stayed under her and they're now leaving one by one into EXP and she'll be the last to come in. But that was kind of an awkward way of doing it. Not everybody has that freedom and flexibility. So it's nice to hear about that letter of intent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what, you know, you've been there about a year now, you're an icon agent. We've covered kind of what that is in previous shows and people can go back on topcloudagents.com and see that. But what, what has like lived up to and exceeded expectations or where are you still kind of saying, gosh, there's room for improvement? I would say what's exceeded the expectations was just, um, I knew I'd be an icon agent just from my production. So when I initially saw that, I was like, okay, that makes total sense. I, can invest, I can get my entire cap back, you know, in the form of stock, um, pretty much a no brainer. Um, so that was awesome, but I didn't realize, you know, how fast the stock awards and stuff would accumulate off of production yeah. when you can invest 5% of your commission dollar at a 20% discount, you know, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I looked this morning, you know, just kind of prepare for the call in case that question came up is, uh, you know, I looked at it and I was like, holy cow, I've accumulated way more stock than I thought I have. And just, you know, realistically for me, it's only been nine months because it took me almost three months to transition. Yeah. So my cap data is April 1st, but my first transaction didn't actually close with EXP until June. Okay. Um, so it, it's pretty cool that, you know, I'm actually being paid to be here. You know, once I have my stock awards, um, referring agents into the company, and then getting my cap back, I'm actually well above a hundred percent split with my broker. Which is and, and very few brokerages. I don't think any brokerage offers a hundred plus percent, right? Yeah, even the ones that advertise a hundred percent typically charge, you know, like a four ninety five transaction fee or whatever, you know, and that never goes away. Right. Um, with you know the equity awards and things like that, you know, even after any kind of ancillary fees, I'm way above a hundred percent. You can share, you can say no, but do you care to share with us the stock number? Yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're over uh, 4,200 shares right now. Wow, uh, that's awesome. Which is 4,200 shares in less than nine months. I mean, people, you did, I purchased, most of it purchased at like 20% discount. Yeah. Aaron's going to get stock back, his whole cap back in the form of stock. And then again, through going to the shareholder summit, going to the EXP convention, he gets more stock. Um, that's just a fantastic opportunity. Now, someone might say, Hey, this is a great opportunity. Like a part-time producer is going to look at you 
and say, well, this is a great opportunity for someone doing 150 homes a year, but what about for me? And then someone doing 100 homes a year is going to be like, I can't possibly do it, <laughs> right? Even though Aaron did it. It's funny. Like, people got to get this mental block. What would you say to the part-timer? What would you say to the full-timer before we wrap up? You know, I'd just say that they all add up. Even if um, you're not going to icon or what have you, um, the stock, it's, I mean, of that 4,200, only 1,200 of those are from the icon award coming back to me. So 3,000 are from other you know, things, Re uh, referring agents in that came into the company um, from the 5% stock purchase. So those things just add up over time and they don't ever go away. And if the stock continues to grow, you know, as far as we continue to grow as a company, produce more revenue, the company, I think, you know, I'm not a stock picker or anything like that by any stretch of the imagination, but if the company grows, your stock position grows as well. So it's, it is an investment account, you know, and the 5% of your commission really doesn't hurt. You know, if you make a $10,000 commission, you're not going to miss that 500 bucks. Right. You know? So it's nice to have it auto invested. You know, I listen to people like Dave Ramsey and those guys and they say business owners should invest basically anywhere from 15 to 20% of their gross commission income back in case something happens or what have you, uh, you have slow months, whatnot. So I'm already doing that with 5% here plus, you know, so that's already done for me. Yeah. And but, you know, we talk about passive revenue. We talk about stock. I mean, you're basically getting three income buckets for doing the exact same job. Absolutely. Uh, and Dave Ramsey in financial peace talks about getting a side hustle to get your debt snowball going. Your side hustle can be agent attraction. How much Absolutely. time, how much time a week do you spend on agent attraction? Did you give it much thought at all? Are people proactively approaching you? You know, the, uh, my agent attraction has probably been the lowest part of my game so far because I've been dealing with, you know, still selling real estate, but as I've started building that side, I'm like, holy cow, if I just actually focused on that, I could actually sell less real estate because this would take, you know, more of the places for the homes that I'm selling. Um, so for me right now, it's people coming to me because uh, yeah. I was a pretty good producer. So people see that I've left and, hey, why'd you go to EXP? And you just explain your story. Nice. Um, and, and then... And then last, lastly, I mean, you brought up DOS, which for many people don't even know what that is. <laughs> you know, like, I was born in 1970, so I do. Um, but, you know, you're a tech savvy person. EXP has a lot of good tech involved. Um, is, it, is it, you know, technology wise, what do you appreciate in EXP? I'm sure you're still using a lot of the stuff you had before and are transitioning over. And, you know, should the tech be intimidating to someone who doesn't know tech? You know, not really because it's so easy. So it's one place to log in to ask anybody a question. I, I think back to when I wasn't a broker, when I was at a previous company, and I'd have a question on a contract or had an issue pop up. I'd have to go to that office, leave a note for my broker, and maybe get a call back two or three days later. I have an answer within five or ten minutes in the cloud. Yeah. I can log in from my phone, from my computer, and boom, there's my answer, um, which is super, super easy. And the thing that I think – is most beneficial to me is SkySlope, having that technology provided to us for free. Um, what an amazing tool to have one place to house everything. You know exactly which documents you need, which ones have been submitted, what things you need to bring in. And all of my team and the team at eXp can all communicate through one platform and go in and see everything that's happening. It's super simple and super easy to do. And I, yeah, I found, I, found Sky Slope to be, I found Sky Slope to be awesome. And it's helped me get paid right at the closing table every single time. Absolutely. Yeah, and you hear about other brokerages that are waiting two weeks to get paid or they're wondering if the broker is going to have enough money to pay them. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, wow, getting paid at the table from a national company is fantastic. Aaron, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, folks, if, if, you, if you are a fan of Aaron's or if you became a fan of Aaron's from this show uh, and want to learn more about eXp, Aaron, what's the best way people could reach out to you? Yeah, so my email address is Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at kinre.com, K-I-N-N-R-E.com. Um, and my personal cell phone number is 817-939-6584. And folks, you don't find that at just about any other firm in town or in the country where it doesn't matter what brokerage you're with, what satellite you're with, what revenue tree you're with. Aaron's just like, call me. You know, I'm happy to help. I'm doing, you know, hundreds of deals a year. 
talk to you about lead gen, whatever it might be. There are icon masterminds every Friday in the cloud. Um, and the cloud, I mean, is supported by three or 350 at this point, full-time people. It's not like they're working out a living room. So <laughs> there is a solid corporation behind this company. I hope this call and this, uh, this interview and the others that are on the show are informative to people. If you want to reach out to me uh, for any reason, or if you know someone who should be on the show and a good candidate, um, my cell phone is 303-589-2320. And you can reach me at richard.jansen at exprealty.com. J-A-N-S-O-N. Hey, Aaron, thanks again so much for your time. Just super generous of you just to come on here, not knowing me from Adam, uh, and just to share your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience. And, you know, we're, we're all a part of trying to grow the stock and the company together. And I just really appreciate seeing that in you. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. That was awesome. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. I'll be in, I'll be in Austin in, in, the, in the weeks to come, but I guess that's probably too far away to see you. But Yeah, <laughs> maybe the next time to see me would probably be at the uh, shareholders convention. Can I go to that? So. All right. Perfect. Hey, take care. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.